Hello everybody. Today we're going to give you uh, a quick introduction to the world of musical sound design. You know, all those kind of swooshy whoosh, whoosh, type things which make music more interesting, more contemporary and all the rest of it. There are some foundation techniques which everybody needs to know. Um, now, if I was going to explain and demonstrate them all, it would take quite a long time. So you need to look at this more as a checklist than a sort of uh, compact course. But what we're going to do is look at the kind of way you combine these different techniques to produce interesting, fun sounds. And it is tremendous fun. So, you know, if you've never done this or you've done this and you fancy stretching your legs a bit and finding some additional ways, stay with me. And if this is the kind of thing which floats your boat, feel free to subscribe because then I can explain more at some future point. Right, what I've got going here is uh, Cubase. The first one we're going to look at is simple digital audio manipulation. Editing, running things backwards, stuff like that. So here we have a gong. There we go, that sounds, that sounds more like a gong. Right, I'm just going to record a note in. Make it nice and long. Now, the first thing we're going to do with that is turn it into audio. Now, regardless of what door you're working in, all these techniques to some, it will translate whether you're in Logic, Cubase, um, Ableton, Reaper, there's always a way to do this. So, although I'm going to be showing you the techniques in Cubase, um, you will need then to go and look up how to do it in your own particular door. For example, uh, in Cubase, if I, where should I do this? Here we go. Um, if I right click on the, um, th that and I go to render in place, I think you can see that, uh, I can uh, turn it into a piece of audio and then lo and behold there it is. So this is a really important thing because you're going to be taking quite a lot of MIDI and things like that and turning it into a piece of audio. Now, um, what can you do with that? You can do all kinds of things with that. What I'm going to do first of all is a simple piece of layering. So if we take a... Let's just record in a piano note as well. Okay, let's turn that into um, a piece of audio as well. Right, now, what I can do, get rid of that, is we're going to start with a piano and then crossfade into, uh, into the gong. So I'm going to go like that and like that. Let's see what this sounds like. And when I say let's see what this sounds like, this is a really important thing. Uh, in the world of sound design, trial and error. What's that going to sound like? Maybe that would be interesting. 19 times out of 20 it sounds pants, but that one time. Yeah, it's alright. It's not really floating. Okay, you know, it's, it's not rocket science, is it? I mean, then you can start adding stuff onto it. No, I'll, I'll come on to that in a minute. The other, so that might have worked, or you could do it the other way around. Uh, it's very difficult to know sometimes which is going to be, you know, what's going to be the most, what things are going to sound like until you do them. So let's try this. There we go. Okay, that's, yeah, it's all right, isn't it? So, that, I mean, that at its most simple is the kind of thing you can get up to. Let's do another one. Um, the next thing you would be looking to do with this um, is to run it backwards. Um, so, uh, a, a, a reverse sound is um, an absolutely classic piece of Um, sound design. And what's really interesting about reverse sounds, and I think you could start to hear it there, um, is this bit right at what was the front and is now the back is very important because you get this little tiny thing here called the transient, which is the, the initial impact of the, of the note, and that is often very different to the rest of it. So you can hear it do that kind of sh thing. Now you may or may want it, not want it to do that, so sometimes I take the end off, so it doesn't click. So, so a reverse sound, um, you can do the same thing with uh, 
obviously with piano. Piano is a very popular thing to do. Render the piano in place, run the piano backwards. You notice that, okay, so when I'm reversing things, um, I'm just going, I've already set up key commands to go command R for reverse in uh, Cubase. With these things which you use all the time, and I would suggest probably uh, stuff like that you're gonna be using day in, day out. It's not a bad idea to set it up so it's nice and quick and easy to do. I've also got a, um, I don't know if you can see this, uh, uh, over on the right, a stream deck, which is um, really useful for this kind of thing as well. So I can feed all kinds of stuff into it. So here we go. We got piano and... Let's line them up. So you can, layering the two together sounds all right. Now... Those are really, really simple things to do, and you can start. Um, you can do. You can introduce a different sort of texture with this one, and just sort of leap forward a bit and add an effect to this one. Um, so here's the gong. Let's add a choppy effect. So I'm going to put Transgate on. This is a, a programmable gate which will make things go. Choo -choo 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 -choo. Okay. This is from Killer Hearts. Highly recommended. Now, if you listen. Except I put it on the wrong track, didn't I? Obviously, I put it on the wrong track. That was my deliberate mistake, just to catch you out, just to make sure, here we go, let's try this. You can hear already. Now, what a lot of the time you might do is just introduce that uh, that sort of choppy effect right at the end. Like that. And that, so that can sound quite interesting. Um, or um, you have two layers of the, of the gong. Uh, so you take the gong, you have a big layer of the gong, and then you just bring that in at the end. See how that works? Let me just put that in the middle of the screen so you can see it easily. Um, so all I've done here, that's the choppy one, that's the non-choppy one, so I'm cross-fading between the choppy one and the non-choppy one, so it sounds like... like that. And that sounds I think, pretty cool. I like that. I mean, it's the kind of thing you do a lot and um, you sort of hear this stuff and you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, right, let's move on. And as I said, this was a checklist rather than a kind of deep, and then I get in deep into the weeds and I go, whoa, this is fun, I'm gonna do more of this. Okay, <laughs> okay so calm down, guy, do it properly. Right, um, let's start adding some, uh, some pitch shifting to some of this because if we take, um, okay, let's take, the, let's take the gong the right way around again. So let me just go back to that. Here we go. There's the gong. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Right. Okay. Get rid of him for the moment. Put that on. Uh, that. Get rid of the choppy thing. We don't want the choppy thing anymore. Thanks very much, mate. Goodbye. You are the weakest thing. Okay. Right, um, so if we take this um, here, now this does vary a lot from one library to another. Um, I'm going to go into processes, uh, pitch shift. Now, a lot of the time a pitch shifting thing will look like that and it'll just simply allow you to pitch it down like this. Okay. Now, Cubase has a really good thing, which is this envelope. So this, I will go. There's the there's the range, eleven uh, eleven semitones, um, and I can then draw this down. And now it'll go. Which can be quite interesting.
or you can make it go up and down. That's always quite fun. And all kinds of stuff you can do with this. So, now, interesting things to bear in mind here. Uh, let me just try and zoom in. Here we go. Um, and this applies to all pitch shifting uh, algorithms like this. Do you see this thing, time correction? Um, when you shift uh, a piece of digital audio up or down, what it essentially is doing is speeding the... It's playing it back either faster or slower. If it plays it back faster, the pitch goes up, plays it back slower, the pitch goes down. Um, now, suppose you've got something which is uh, rhythmic, something, you know, you've got... You don't want it when you pitch it down to go... You want to stay in time. So that's why this little button here, time correction, what that will allow you to do is to do the pitch shifting without... Um, messing with the um, uh, the the, temp the tempo, so it's just another thing to bear in mind. Um, right, checklist guy, keep going, keep going. Right, um, what we're going to be doing? Uh, there are actually, I tell you what, just one other thing on the um, pitch shifty things. Um, the uh, where is it? Here we go, gong. Um, one thing you can do, let me just play a new one in. Play it in, bounce it out. Now, um, there is a, um, a really useful and not expensive plugin called SoundShifter, uh, which is from Waves, and I know they've gone through some, uh, they're quite controversial at the moment. But if you manage to buy this outright, I completely support everybody who's saying that um, it's a really terrible idea to um, just go purely subscription. Um, this is really, really useful. It just real time, you can whack the pitch up and down, and this is probably... And yet again, I think I put it on the wrong track. Here we go, gong 1R, 1R, let's just make sure. Uh, gong, no, there we go, right. So here we go, let's get this up. Thanks very much. Right, so if I pitch it up and down by it, there's up by an octave. It's real time. Or you can go and you can automate that. That's really cool as well. So this is quite a, a useful way. And then on top of that, you can do the um, pitch shift uh, envelope thing. So it goes like that. So you got. So you do that. And you get all kinds of nice and interesting things going on. Right, moving on. Um, what you would do a lot of the time with these kind of things is. Um, I mean, it should be said that a lot of the time you're going to build up loads and loads of layers with different little elements which go, you know, a little fluttery thing which goes or something like that, and, you know, all those kind of things. So if you, um, but more often than not, you're going to be putting uh, multiple effects on uh, the same thing until you, so it, it's iterative. You go, okay, that's quite a nice effect. We've, we've messed about with the pitch there. What else can we do with this? Um, so let's uh, start adding one or two other effects to it. What happens, for example, if? What if, again, of course, okay. Now, there is a really nice piece of uh, software called Black Hole from Eventide, and it is this insane reverb. It's not really reverb. It's like granulous. <laughs> See what I mean? Now you can freeze it like, and it just keeps the, the sound at that level forever. Um, that's quite good. Now, what I might do, um, I'm quite fond of guitar effects. Um, Native Instruments Guitar Rig is wonderful. Um, there's lots of others and there's built-in ones in, in most um, doors, but you can do all kinds of quite extreme stuff with guitar um, 
um, effects pedals and things like that. Um, first time I opened it up on this rig. There we go. So it's having a little think. Um, and here we go. That was dull. This is still dull. Good. Delighted to see it. Right, okay. Just choose one at random. When you've got it, you bounce it out again. So you're iteratively bouncing the thing out all the time. Okay, what happens if I run it backwards? Or even, um, okay, this is one I quite like doing. Uh, make a copy, run it the other way. Um, and then you can overlap them so that it does what I call an in and out. So it, there we go, overlap. Uh, let's go to equal. Uh, can we, oh God, come on. Ah! What am I doing? Here we go. So you get something which doesn't work that well actually on this one. Um, uh, it actually might work better without the um, guitar rig stuff on it. But yeah, so you can run it backwards and forwards at the same time. That's quite, that can be quite fun. Um, so that works pretty well. What else are we going to uh, look at? Um, the modulation thing is important. Um, we've already touched on that, but um, let me just show you what I mean. Uh, let's take, uh, where's this one? Let's, okay, it's running, running the right way around again. Which one is he? Oh, R1R. R1R. Okay, so let's take some of these off. Okay, so there's any number of ways you can use this kind of modulation. I mean, this is a trance gate, so it's not really modulation, but, but for example, you can make it much, much slower and have lots of attack on it and bring it down like that. Um, which I quite like. So you can play, you know, you can see how, and again, lots of this you can automate, so it goes and things like that, and all that kind of malarkey is quite fun as well. One of the things which um, uh, works well, um, another thing you can do, if we uh, let's delete some of these, we're getting hundreds of these. Well, oh yeah, okay. Say goodbye. Remove. Let's go back to the piano. Play a clustery thing in. Okay, bounce it out. Um, and now, all pretty much, as far as I know, all um, samplers now have, uh, um, all doors have this simple sampler track. Um, and all it allows you to do is without all the faff of. Um, loading up a proper sampler like uh, contact, it, you can put it into this and you can go. So I'm now playing chords with chords.
And even within some of these samplers, you can see there, there's quite a lot of stuff you can do. Um, so there we are, we've created a piece of sound which wouldn't have existed without the sampler. And then on the sampler track sampler, arp, you know, uh, we can you know, put in whatever weird and wacky stuff we want. Um, flange it, why not? Let's see what happens. Okay, it's quite interesting. Go back to black hole again. At, um, let's go in here. Uh, Dreamscape. Oh, yeah. Ah, dark matter. That, that's more <laughs> what I had in mind. Here we go. No. Um, nebula. That's quite good. Okay. Then we can put the gong underneath it, maybe. Um, unmute it. What, what, the, one the, okay, what happens if I um, pitch that down, right down? Um, so I go... Uh, bit shift, uh, transpose, what can I take it down, an octave at a time, uh, or can I go down more? Yeah, maybe you can go down more. Right, see how that... That's quite nice. Okay, so where's my... Right, line them up, um, and then... So now you're starting to see how you end up using some of these, all these things come together. Um, so. So you've got this kind of effect I might put in here um, is uh, a delay. Um, ping pong delay, if I've got one, yep, there we do, that'll do. This is just a straight out of the box one, I think, yeah. No, no, well, there we go, eighth, eight tri trip, that'll do. And that's a perfectly nice sound. I mean, so using combinations of these different techniques, you can end up with some really incredible stuff. This is not really incredible stuff. This is just, as I say, this sort of sound design checklist, so to speak. And this is before we even get into um, the whole business of um, using synthesizers and stuff like that. But if you combine this, if you can find interesting ways of taking a sound like that and sort of blending it in with other stuff, um, then you suddenly got a really... In uh, I'm talking myself into doing this. Okay, so let's get... Let's add a synth in underneath it. Uh, let's go with my... My go-to June 3 from Synapse Audio. Um, it's just got a wonderfully rich sound. Um, uh, what have I got going on here? Have I got my any of my user ones in? No, that's a shame. Ones I've actually made myself. Uh... Is there any tonality? There is a bit. Okay, then we'll mm, 
have another one of those up there. Then we'll add in Do stuff with this. Um, so we're gonna pitch him down a lot. Pitch shift, yeah, he can go down too. Yeah, I like that. It's got that kind of look, that thuddy thing. Doesn't have to be particularly rhythmic. Um, no, don't like that. Um, so we'll go for um, what else am I going to put in here? Um, contact. Let's get something more interesting than. Uh, it's just a straight normal piano. What have I got? Um, um, okay. You're up, Sonic Couture. Okay. Let's. I quite like this. I, I like this a lot, actually. I use this quite a bit. Um, So now this needs this does um, it needs some reverb on it, but not the big one. Vintage verb. Thank you, vintage verb. Yep. Right. Okay. A bit quiet. Okay. Here we go. Ho, 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 ho. So, I hope this has given you, i am just decided to stop there, <laughs> have you noticed? <laughs> uh, I hope this has given you some kind of insight into uh, the process. And I know a lot of you may well be familiar with this, but I thought, whoa, what the hell? Let's just kind of roll it out and let you have a look and you, know, you can uh, take something away which you haven't thought about before. Um, but, if you're on Logic or Reaper or Ableton, um, all of these have their own sort of secret sauce, their own special extra thing that they do better than anything else. And, you know, you need to dive in and find out what that is because although they'll all do the running backwards thing and they'll do pitch shifting thing and all that, um, there's normally stuff in there which you go, ooh, that's good. Um, Ableton's particularly good for this because you've got this sort of drag and drop effects chain thing, which is really good. FL Studio is really good because almost every track is a sampler track, so that's really cool. So everybody has, you know, horses for courses. Look, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, 
we run courses in sound, um, musical sound design like this, actually. Um, so you can check it out on the website. If you've enjoyed this video and you think this is uh, your kind of thing, then subscribe and I'll do more of them. Simple as that, really. Yeah. What more could you want? Anyway, thanks very much for your company. I'll see you again very soon.